This is the second of two recordings on some basic results involving the sine and cosine of various angles. In the first recording I demonstrated the two equations shown here. The cos of negative theta is the same as cos of theta and sine of negative theta is minus sine of theta. We demonstrated this in the first recording by looking at the graph of cos theta and estimating that the height of the graph for a value theta was the same as that for negative theta. We then went on to prove the result more rigorously by defining the cos of theta as the x-coordinate of a point on the unit circle at angle theta from the x-axis. By doing it that way we were able to prove the result without estimating heights. As a bonus, the second result fell out for the sine at the same time. Remember that sine is the y-coordinate of a point on the unit circle. In this second recording, I'm going to use the unit circle again and prove a new result. I'll write it down now. Well, actually, I said a new result, but in fact there are going to be two again, one for cos and one for sine. The results are those shown here. Cos of theta plus 90 degrees is the negative sine of theta and sine of theta plus 90 degrees is cos theta. We're going to do this again using the unit circle. Let's draw a unit circle now and mark on a point at angle theta. I'll use the first quadrant for theta though the argument would work in any quadrant. Here's the unit circle. That's a circle with radius 1 and I've marked on a radius at an angle that I've called theta. The point where the radius hits the circle is the point xy. The definition of cos and sine is that cos theta is x and sine theta is y, as long as the circle is a unit circle, of course. Now the relations I said I wanted to prove this time involved adding 90 degrees to the angle theta. So I now have to draw another radius at 90 degrees anti-clockwise around from theta. That will be a radius in the second quadrant. Let's put it on now. There it is. I've marked in the angle 90 degrees between the two radii and where the second radius hits the circle I've called that coordinate pair x1, y1. Since the whole angle round from the x-axis anti-clockwise to the second radius is theta plus 90 degrees we can write down two relations for the cos of that angle. Cos theta plus 90 must be x1 and sine theta plus 90 must be y1. x1 will be negative here of course. I now want to relate the distances x1 and y1 to the values x and y or cos theta and sine theta that is. Look at the angle that I've just marked in and called phi. Phi and theta and the right angle make up 180 degrees. So phi must be 90 minus theta. If phi is 90 minus theta, then the small angle at the top of the triangle in the second quadrant, next to x1, y1, must again be theta. Let's mark that in. We're now in a position to look at that triangle in the second quadrant and mark in its sides in terms of sine theta and cos theta. In fact, since the hypotenuse is still 1, the base of that triangle must be sine theta and its height must be cos theta. I'll mark those in now. But now we've almost got the result we want, because the height of that triangle, of course, is the coordinate y1. So we can say that y1 equals cos theta. But y1 was just sine of 90 plus theta, so we've got the first result. Let's write it down. y1 equals sine of theta plus 90 degrees and using that triangle in the second quadrant we've just discovered that that is equal to cos theta. That's the first result that we wanted. What about the other result? Well, the base of our triangle has length sine theta, but that's in the negative x direction, and the coordinate on the left-hand side of that triangle is the coordinate x1. We're therefore in a position to say that x1 
which here we see, remember, is cos of theta plus 90 degrees. But that's equal to sine theta, but in the negative x direction. So it must be minus sine theta. That's the second of the results I claimed I was going to prove. You could see these results also by doing the graphs of sine and cos and looking at shifts by 90 degrees. But there you would have to estimate the heights again. Here, using the unit circle, the result is quite rigorous. I want to finish off by looking at two further formulae involving 90 minus theta instead. The formulae I've proved here are true in general for any angle we like. So it's quite a valid procedure to change theta to negative theta if we wish. Let's do that in the first formula. Sine of negative theta plus 90 degrees or alternatively if we prefer sine of 90 minus theta must be equal to, and then I must change the right hand side as well, so that will be cos of negative theta. But in part one of the recording we proved that cos of negative theta is the same as cos theta. So we now have our third result, cos of 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta. Let's number these, just so we can remember which results we were actually interested in finding. The last one involves the cos result. Cos of negative theta plus 90 degrees. So now I'm taking result 2 and changing theta to negative theta. That must be negative sine of, and theta changes to negative theta again. But now remember again our result from part 1 of the recording, where sine of negative theta is minus sine theta. So that's two minuses. Minus, minus sine of theta, but two minuses make a plus. So our fourth result says cos of 90 degrees minus theta is equal to sine theta. And that's result four. I think I'm even going to now circle those results so that we can find them again quickly if we ever want. I will be using these results in a further recording in which I look at things of the form sine of theta plus alpha and cos of theta plus alpha and also theta minus alpha and theta minus alpha in the cos as well. So these results I've proved here will be used when we look at the proof of the sum formally for angles in trig functions. I just want to finish this recording by mentioning a couple of terms that you will sometimes hear, particularly if you study Fourier series, for example. Let me go back to the original results where we had cos of negative theta equals cos theta and sine of negative theta equals minus sine of theta. We can talk about results like that for functions in general. We say if f of negative theta is equal to f of theta we call f an even function. It has mirror symmetry about the vertical axis. And if f of negative theta is f is minus f of theta, then we say f is an odd function. It has another kind of symmetry, that of 180 degree rotation about the origin. You can learn more about these features of functions by looking at the maths class on odd and even functions. And as I mentioned before, they are very useful in the study of Fourier series.